So guys, it's Savannah from Earth and Water and April, the Enriched Switch. Uh, it's been a while. Okay, so we just posted an episode not too long ago, like last week or something. We have two more episodes coming up in that series. But the fun thing is, is that those th first three episodes, but this will probably be the second episode, but those first three episodes we recorded were recorded about two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, that's how life prog progresses. It Look, takes the that long. The pandemic happened. No. Everybody. No. You're not going to blame it on that? No. Oh, she's blaming me. It's fine. <laughs> it's April's fault. That's okay. No. Well, anyway. <laughs> we bought a lot of equipment, though. We're ready. And we're working on it. So hang with us, and it's going to be a little rough start from the beginning, but it's going to be good enough, we think. And then we hope to improve with time, yes. as you do. So, today we want to talk about Yule, since Christmas is coming up, it's December, um, mm, you know, uh, we could go into a whole thing about the holidays, but that that's not what we're here. We're going to talk about Yule, and the will of the year is where this comes from, and it's running off of, okay, yeah, so the will of the year does start with Yule. I thought it ended with Yule, but it doesn't. Well, it's the return of the sun. Um, the sun's... Yeah, it makes sense. The shortest day of the year. But the sun is coming back. Warmth is returning. Things yeah. are coming back alive. Um, so the will of the year is a 12-pointed... I want to say star in a circle. How about, is it a star? Yeah. I've never seen it in a star. Okay. Um, that follows the solstices and the equinoxes, equinox being equal time during the day and at night. Um, it follows the harvest season. Uh, it starts with Yule and ends with Samhain. Uh, you might have seen it called Samhain. Uh, the actual pronunciation is Samhain. Um, and that's pretty much like our Halloween. It is Halloween. Yeah, it's all the same. That's the thing is that a lot of them translate pretty directly like ostara is easter yule is christmas halloween is Samhain, and then nobody really cares about the rest <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean they're they all center around a feast that's like the golden point is you get to eat food and have a fire it's all a bonfire they're all bond they're basically all yeah. fire festivals aren't they so yeah there's the equinox and the solstice and then you have one in between each of those right there's mm -hmm. two equinoxes in a year that, where the light and the dark the day and the night are of equal length and then you have two solstices where they tap out on one or the other if that makes sense mm -hmm. So Yule is the winter equinox, solstice, uh, mm -hmm. solstice, because it's tapping out. It's the shortest day of the year. And from here on out, uh, it's essentially like those of us with seasonal depression, for sure, is a time to celebrate because it's the sun's going to start coming back and it's going to start getting dark later again until we tap out in the summer. If but, we were uh, Germanic pagans, uh we would be feasting and partying from mid-November to the beginning of January. Oh, fun. Yeah. Man, God, I hate it here. <laughs> um, But here in the United States, if you do celebrate Yule, usually it's uh, one day in December. Lame. I know. Usually I have between it the 19th my... and the 21st. I haven't marked on my calendar for a whole week. I know. We'll party. It's fine. Um, it's one of the oldest known winter celebrations, and, uh, it's been celebrated since before time. Since before time. Before time. Before recorded history. Yes. Yeah, it, it, yeah, for sure, for sure. I knew that. <laughs> um, it marks the beginning of the solar system. What? The solar <laughs> the season. solar system. The solar season. Yule was the Big Bang. It was the Big Bang. 
the sun is back. And it, oh, in Christianity, it's the return of the sun, S O N, which is a nod from paganism. It's supposed. I thought that was Easter. No, I just meant that they're connected. Oh the well, yeah, of the sun, the returning of the sun, S O N. Right, but I, I really did like growing up in Christianity and whatnot. Think that Easter was the celebration of the return of the sun. No, he died. I mean, so so he died on Easter, but he. Well, I mean, he came back. He can't. He but Easter's after. I don't. I, <laughs> we're not Christian. Leave us alone. I have no idea what's happening. Oh gosh. I mean, don't take it out. I'm not. I'm not going to take that out. Odd man out here. But anyway, um. Okay, so it originated in Germany. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. It originated in Germany as. Um, you know, it's pretty depressing in the winter. Are, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's depressing, and uh, they knew that the sun was coming back. It was going to get warm again, and they wanted to have a big party. And they just kept everybody drunk, so they, they didn't did. have to worry about seasonal depression. Um, they drank to Odin. <laughs> they oh, that's a good point. Maybe we should be drunks. Um, they drank to several gods. Um... I'm looking up how to pronounce their names. <laughs> um, Freyer was one. Um, Freyer Odin. or Freya? Well, it's I R mm -hmm. in German, but uh, I would be that. I believe that would be Freya. Same thing. One and the same. So I was thinking, like last year or something. I'm really good about having epiphanies on my own, and then realizing that the whole world already knew what I just figured out, but, um, my whole philosophy, like, a year or so ago was, no, it was probably longer than that, but anyway, was we have so many holidays packed into the winter. Yes. Because we're trying to stave off depression. Is, oh, you think that's it? Yeah. That's, a, that's fucking genius. Is it? Yeah. As a society, it was genius as a society. Just keep everybody partying. And then, but we don't have that anymore. We don't have that connection because that's what it's all about. Community. And yeah. It all goes, it all goes back to how we used to live. Everything. In big communities. You have a harvest together. You plant together. You reap and sow. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes back to community and survival. Well, we're designed to connect deeply with the people in our lives we're pack animals we're supposed to be surrounded by people all of the time all of the time and now a lot of us go days at a time without seeing anyone oh it's bad it's, it's bad Ooh, guys um i wanted to add um freyer is freya's brother oh and the third god uh no idea how to pronounce his name, but uh, it's their father. So I've never been into gods and goddesses and stuff. So you drink a tankard to all three of them um, to honor them, and that sounds like a really fun time. Yep. I mean, the shows here recently have showed us that Vikings can definitely have a good time. <laughs> I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. Viking community. Go back to Viking times. A lot of people are going to have bad things to say about that. <laughs> I'm charmed by the, the aesthetic, though. Me too. So getting back to Yule. Yule was turned into Christianity in 1934. 1934. No, 934. I'm sorry. Nine. 934. 900 during, like, the Crusades and stuff. I don't know. Don't We don't claim to know that. I don't know when the Crusades were, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but let's look it up. A hundred years from then. Okay, so the Crusades started in 1095. So I was not far off, thank you. You're I welcome. studied history. That was what I was majoring in when I was actually in college. I didn't go to college. I thought that it was a waste of money and time. So did I, but I had to go. <laughs> I had rules growing no, up. I didn't. I didn't have a single rule growing up. And, uh, well. So anyway, Yule, we, uh, we made it is essentially 
because you're supposed to look at the will of the year as a collective whole. So when you first start looking at celebrating these holidays that sync up with the earth and the seasons and the solar system, whatever, 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 uh, they say that you want to like just kind of step back and look at things and kind of review the year as a whole and how things are from year to year and as someone who is just just now feels like she's reached adulthood i feel like i only became consciously aware of the cycles of the seasons and how they affect me like the past two years yeah I mean, we know we know about seasonal allergies because those like punch us in the face. But as far as like the subtleties and stuff that most of us are missing because we stay inside way too much. That's really true. I stay inside more than most. So anyway, we've made it. Uh, the winter has been long and hard. And, you know, I don't that don't that doesn't feel right to me nope 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 because winter has not even gotten here yet yule is the first day of winter isn't it is that yes the, yeah on the calendar okay yeah so yule's the first day of winter so we've arrived at winter we're at the peak and it'll get colder it's, it's going to get colder here but the days will start to get longer um, and I think that's pretty subjective, depending on where you live. I oh, know, probably. Uh, we just we live in the Ama the Alabama Amazonian. Nope. No what? That's not right. I know it's not actually called the Amazon, the Alabama Amazon. <laughs> We're in the Appalachian Mountains, the very bottom of them. But it's very moist, very swampy. My elephant ears are bigger than I am. Okay, that's that's it. That's <laughs> I have tree going. frogs. Me too. It's um, like, it's only cold. It gets cold here, but only for like a month or two. I had a point I was going to make. No, I don't. Fuck it is. I'll come back to it. Okay. So, yeah, I don't really know. Oh, in Alaska, their darkness has already started. Yeah. It's, it's flipped in the Southern Hemisphere versus the Northern Hemisphere. So, they're celebrating the opposite of Yule right now, which is... I was saying that it's dark in Alaska. I mean, the sun doesn't You said Australia. Up. No, I didn't. You said Australia. I did not. I got... Look, we recorded it. We'll go see. Okay, you said Alaska. It's mm -hmm. fine. I feel like you owe me a beer or something. There's no way in hell I owe you a beer for the rest of our lives. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right, so we can talk about the correspondence and how to celebrate Yule and the things associated with Yule. I have a list here that I'm just going to read out from uh, Practical Magic. It's a book by Nikki Van Dekar. It's beautiful, by the way. It's lots of illustrations. Highly recommend it. So the colors are basically what you're going to think is associated with Christmas. It's red, green, gold, and silver. So you can use the colors by wearing them or sur decorating with them or surrounding yourself with them or you know making red green gold and silver cupcakes whatever uh the stones associated so crystals associated with it is ruby garnet emerald and diamond herbs are bayberry evergreen milk thistle holly and mistletoe and i do want to make some points that uh these holidays are hugely personal okay you're and there is power in the collective and celebrating the aspects that other people celebrate but like we were talking earlier about the southern hemisphere and the northern hemisphere and the different seasons and the climate and all of that these holidays are about tuning yourself to the world you live in and you probably don't unless you live next door to me you probably don't live in the same world i live in uh, the you want to focus on what you're coming in contact with naturally in the world around this time of year and just kind of go with that so like you know the trees that we have there's evergreen trees and you kind of want to focus on the green because the alternative is the dead leaves you know <laughs> the dead dead trees but um 
there's a lot of red berries on the trees right now that I've seen, personally. And the same thing with the stones and the herbs and everything when it comes to correspondence and aspects. If it just does not feel right in your heart that that means that, that, you know, rose quartz, no matter how much you think about it, look at it, whatever, rose quartz to you just does not feel like love the way an emerald does, then by all means follow that, okay? Get in tune with yourself and what you feel and the emotions that you're catching when you catch them. And think about it. Just, just you know, pay attention. But anyway, so these holidays are really personal and I just want you to do what feels right to you. This book literally says, drink a lot of cider. It's traditional. I can get behind that. Yeah. Oh, the Yule Log. Some. Yeah, let's, I mean. You can call your Christmas tree a Yule tree. Yeah, for sure. If you, um, if Christmas to you means, uh, having a little village of people on your table, you can call it your Yule village. You sure can. You can do whatever you want. Nobody's going to come police you. No. Nobody cares. Do what makes you happy. That's it. That's it. Do what makes you happy. Uh, I, I know the Yule Log is supposedly a big thing mm -hmm. where um, I don't know much about the Yule Log uh, in a, like, I can't, I can't translate that to practical terms or whatever. Okay, but, so I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to um, connect it to Judaism. If that's what you want to do. Yule Log's supposed to burn for 12 days and 12 nights. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh-huh it again because <laughs> no it's cool um i know that they there's some traditions that say that you need to burn the yule log because just like Samhain, uh the veil is thin so spirits can cross over or whatever and you want to burn i don't know their pathway keep their path keep it safe it's like a protection type spell or something uh there's also just like with any of the will of the year holidays there are fire festivals and they're just associated a lot with fire because you know fire is cleansing and we always want to be letting go of everything that has been and so that we can move into the future so just kind of dropping it and like it really yeah just letting go of everything that has happened up until that point so that you can move into the next phase of the year with like clear what what was the space Clean, clarity, leave it all behind, move forward. What are you looking up? I was, sorry, sorry I wasn't paying attention. I was uh, looking up to see how long the Yule Log burned. Um, some places it's 12 hours. Um, it's to capture the true magic. And in some other places that it is 12 days. I was making sure I wasn't talking out of my ass there. Uh, I do that sometimes. Uh, and the holiday is Hanukkah, if you're Jewish, which I uh, couldn't think of that a second ago. Oh, okay. I wasn't paying attention when you were talking That's about okay. that. That's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Your food is going to be basically, basically all of them are breads and then just whatever's seasonal in your area. Wine. Wine. Wine is important. Wine is important. And, mm -hmm. Like just in general or yes. like two Yule? Two Yule, but... I don't drink wine. How do you mull wine? You stomp on it. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, if we make it, I have no idea. <laughs> Dried fruits. A lot of cinnamon and spices. Oh, cinnamon and spices is a big thing. You know, nutmeg. That's Warming a lot of things. That's cardamom. Mm hmm Spiced meats. I want some roasted apples right now. I had some yesterday for breakfast, and Blake <sighs> ate some for the first time, and he didn't like them. Well, that's sad. The kids don't like them either. That's fine. I will come over and help. Eat you know you apples? can eat pine cones? I did not. That is important information. You can eat pine cones. You can make syrup out of pine cones. Uh, no, the turpentine? No idea. You don't know anything about turpentine? I know very little about turpentine. Is that a paint stripper? No, it's like, um, 
it's like collodial silver or uh it's it's a health thing mm, totally thought turpentine was what you so did i paint. so did i i think it maybe is i don't know if it's the same turpentine or not so don't go well, drink a bottle too, of i don't think you should i personally don't the, think you should be drinking colloidal silver the same either. reason that all alternative health stuff is hush hushed and taboo in our society and whatnot well i mean that's probably the reason you only hear the horror stories anyways oh yeah for sure Just to keep us from doing it they yeah. don't want us healthy no because healthy Who's people they? are powerful. I'm not going to tell you. You can figure it out. Yeah. They. We'll just keep We'll just keep coming to they. They don't want you to know. Have you tried to earn colloidal silver? What? Have you done droplets of colloidal silver? I have not. I've never had any. But I know if you have too much, it'll turn you blue. Uh-huh. Permanently. Mm -hmm. There's no cure not for it. Not even a good shade. No. Like Smurf per blue. Yeah. For the rest of your life. Dark purpley blue, like bruised looking. Yeah. So anyway, what's with sale? What what? W a s s a i l. Apparently, it's important. I have no to idea. You. I'm gonna Google it. You never heard that. Uh, talk about what? I don't know. So it's a it's a solder. It is a solder. Um, that you use. Okay, what's selling? Um, means. Oh. It's 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 caroling. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go with sailing. With sailing, caroling. You cool. you have to get drunk and go caroling. <laughs> <laughs> that would make Christmas here so much better. Oh, it would make it would make things a lot. If you more just fun. got drunk on some cider. Does mold mean alcoholic? That's what I was gonna ask. Uh, I'm from my understanding. Uh, Cider can be both alcoholic or non-alcoholic, just depending on what kind you get and stuff. You're looking it up. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we're molding it to do what? Go on up. 800 tangents. <laughs> it's better this way. Mold wine is sweeter and fruitier in flavor due to the added sugar and fruit, which you add to it. Obviously, I just said that. It's served at a warmer temperature, so hotter, warmer, and I guess mulled cider would be the same thing. But um, you want to drink alcohol and go with sailing. It's fruit sake. Sure. <laughs> What's sake made out of? Um, rice, I think. Mm -hmm. That would make sense, right? Okay, go. Okay, so talking about silver and you'll hear in the present day, um, whether you are pagan, a Satanist, a heathen, a Christian that's just interested in other box, things. Box, box, blah, blah, box. Let's, let's not box. No boxes. Everybody boxes everything. Okay. Like, we're just... I apologize for boxing. But, um, you know how usually there's gift giving. Um, I saw this really cute thing online, uh, where... You, you know, you get together and you have a Yule feast with your friends and family, your neighbors, people you don't normally invite over. Um, and you just, you get together and to feel safe and you make a big feast. You can do traditional foods that we just talked about, or you can just make your favorite things. Um, we call them potlucks here where everyone brings a dish. Um, some people call it hot dishes. Um, but this was the fun part. Um, you bring along a possession of yours that you no longer want, wrap it up somehow, newspaper, old fabric, Christmas paper, doesn't matter. Um, you put them all in a pile and random people choose something. So you take something that you don't want anymore and then it's new and fun for somebody else. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. I really like that. And this, uh, my favorite thing to do, um, is to set your intentions for the coming year. Yes. That's super important to me. I have to, do, um, an easy way you can do that is you can light a candle and speak your resolutions out loud and then just sit with the candle as it burns down and think about all of those things coming true for you. All of those things as they already happen, have, have already happened. 
Um, I just want to, I just want to real quick be like, you don't have to sit there for eight hours while no. the whole Okay, how about we go to, you can, you can use a birthday candle. Okay, there you go. That's much. But no, no, you don't have to sit there the whole time. Just, I mean, if you've got that many things to think about and sit, I guess. I mean, I don't ever do things like that. I'll light a candle and be like, yo, protect me. I got things to do. You're not supposed and to leave on. candles. <laughs> I mean, I don't like leave them. Leave don't them, listen but... to her. Unless you live next to the fire station like I do, I guess. No, it's not going to help you. <laughs> Who's burnt more things in my house than me or you in my house? Me. You ever set anything on fire? I set a whole towel on fire. You know how many things I've set on fire in my house? I mean, Nothing. I've only burned two things. Nothing that wasn't supposed to be on mm -hmm. fire. I'm sorry. Anyway. Okay, so that's something uh, it's something that's really important. You leave behind the things that you don't want to bring with you for the new year. And only carry over the things that you do want. And I think that that's really nice. Perfect. Um, it's very important. Very important to be clearing that stuff out. Because if we don't, then we're just carrying it around. That's baggage. Yeah. Just carrying it around. You don't want to be stagnant. You don't nope. want baggage. You don't want to be complacent. You want to be the best you and live the best life you possibly can. And your intentions are a great way to do that. Affirmations. Um, another thing that you can do is declutter your space. You've heard of spring cleaning. This is getting a jump start on that. Um, go through. Uh, you can take your stuff to the Yule Feast that we just talked about. <laughs> Get rid of stuff that you don't want. Um, and then more traditional um, Yule Logs. We talked about that briefly earlier. Um, but you, deck, you take an oak log. It's traditionally oak. And you decorate it with pine cones, dried berries, cinnamon sticks, holly, mistletoe. And uh, you place it in your fireplace or in a bonfire outside. It can be the top log on your bonfire. Um, some people use it as a symbolic ritual to release the past and banish old or negative energy that you don't want to follow you into the new year. I see here where some people take a log and then drill holes for teak light candles in it. Oh, that's cute. And put it on their mantle. Sure. There you go. Perfect. Don't have a mantle. It goes on top of your refrigerator. Or your dresser or your kitchen sink or whatever. Whatever space you have is perfect. Don't get hung up on details. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. It's not. Did I mess up your flow? I apologize it's for okay. that. Um, another thing that you can do... Um, Wreaths are really good. Um, I'm not quite sure what a wreath symbolizes. Do you know? I don't. I don't. If anybody knows what a wreath symbolizes in any culture, please yeah, let us please know. Yeah, please let us know. Um, but you can make a wreath of the evergreen trees near you. If you live south of the equator, make one out of palm trees. Do you want a list of some evergreens since I have yeah. one right here? Yeah, we're ready. Uh, pine magnolias hollies holly berries that's that's what's next door anyway boxwood noble fir which is what christmas trees are generally made out of uh -huh. right uh juniper and cedar those are our list of evergreens that i have available to me and they um would be used in a wreath to represent everlasting life protection and prosperity another thing that you can do with your evergreen trees you cut stalks off hopefully with the leaves if you don't have any leaves whatever but um you stick them in a uh, pot together so not a cooking pot a uh plant pot a house oh. <laughs> a uh what is it called you called it a house mm -mm, a pot what's a pot called a, a pot mm -mm. A house plant pot. Ha one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Can you stick them a into flower the flower pot? A flower pot. There we go. Um, together and uh, a yew tree would be perfect. I don't know if we even have those. I don't know either. You can make a as with any of these holidays. You can make an altar. And we have to have a whole episode on altars. Yes, that's A R, not E R. An altar. A R, not E R. A L T A R. Altar. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, anyway, um, because that's really big on uh, 
the symbolism helps focus your mind intentions subconscious all of that toward your goals and what you're thankful for so that you're focusing on the good rather than the bad and yeah we got we have to have a whole episode on altars in and of itself i'm gonna write that down um i would say that most not most. So you hear of a altar, you think that you are worshiping something. Right. It doesn't have to be that. You don't have to worship anything. This can be your personal space that you use to connect to yourself, to the elements around you. Exactly. That's why I want to do a whole episode on uh -huh. it because uh, the biggest problem with all of this stuff is that it's misunderstood. Yeah. So, yes. Knowledge, knowledge, please. That's... I don't know anything else about you. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's... So I will eventually make a accompanying blog post with this where I will write everything down so that you don't have to like take notes or anything like that. But it probably won't happen until next year. Probably not going to get that out before this Yule. So just kind of keep checking back. And you know what? We might make a second Yule part two. Yeah. If we learn more. Cause, I'm sure we will. Yeah. I think that we should celebrate Yule this year. Oh, we celebrated last year. We did. We celebrated, I want to say most. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah. That first year? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That was like two years ago. Though. Okay, I'm sorry. Last year was just, we were just in survival mode last year. I agree. I, and then this I'm year has been survival, out of survival mode. mode. Me too. Um, okay, so... Uh, at the time of recording this, uh, it is Friday night. Tomorrow, or this morning, coming up. Um, I don't think it's this morning. PM. PM. Two well, I don't know what PM. You're talking about. There is a uh, full solar eclipse in the southern hemisphere. Oh, cool. parts of Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and I know it's it's on a new moon. Also, it's the same time as the new moon. I don't know. Some, some of y'all might be able to feel the energy from that. I feel wired as can be. I'm so excited for new beginnings. I'm going to have to post this in the morning now so that they have the opportunity to hear that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Before it comes I, out. I, I sped things along. Sounds okay. Energy, energy, energy. We will try to, as things go, we will iron out all of the wrinkles in this kind of stuff so expect an episode for all of the will of the year things and then probably a will of the year episode in and of itself uh you can find everything on like the show notes and whatnot in huge detail as much as i can on the website earthandwater.co and until then just you know keep up with how things are progressing for us because like we said it took us two years to from start of podcast to actually launching podcast because that's the amount of time that it actually realistically takes to do anything so <laughs> we're human yep you know, just like everybody else but that's great news because if we can do this kind of stuff that means you can too but follow us on all of the social medias and let us know what you think. The more feedback we get from you guys, the better that we can bring awesome stuff to you. So that's all I have. Do you have anything? No, um, I had a new baby. Yeah, she had a whole she had a whole kid. I had a time. whole kid. She's not new anymore. She's from one. Three kids now. Life's crazy. Yep. Did it? Yeah, that's all I had to say. All right. Well, love you guys. Thank you for listening, and we will catch you next time. Bye.